Yes, guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel. I am actually dead after what I have just seen. Tottenham Hotspur 1, Chelsea 4. I've not been talking to anybody. I've been watching the game by myself, but still I somehow have lost my voice in the process of laughing at just how bad Chelsea were. Our striker scores a hat-trick away at Tottenham and we win 4-1. First home defeat in a couple of years for Ange Postacoglu. We have beaten our biggest rivals and yet still we were absolutely shocking, weren't we? But I think when we look back on this game, this could be the moment where Maurizio Pochettino arrives at Chelsea by going to Spurs away and beating them 4-1. It is an astonishing game of football crazy beyond my wildest comprehension and I want to let you guys know about my telegram because I'm giving away 500 British pounds to one of you when we hit 5,000 followers so if you're not following top link in the description go and give it a follow and I'll pick one of you at random to win 500 quid and I can't actually believe what we've seen I absolutely am gobsmacked shell-shocked borderline lost for words after without question the craziest Premier League game of the 23-24 season. If you can find me a more enthralling game of football when it comes to just utterly beyond comprehension things that are going on, find me a game that had more going on than this one and I promise you, I'll send you another flipping £500. But how have Chelsea managed to make such a meal, even though we win 4-1, but how did this become so difficult today? We weren't great at all. I think the footballing IQ that we showed was awful. I think it showed the inexperience in this team that when Tottenham are down to nine men, we still struggled so much to break them down. And in the end, Nicholas Jackson gets a hat-trick. But it was only the third goal, I promise you, it was only the third goal going in from him that made me change his box from a yellow to a green. Because other than that, putting the ball in the net from literally two or three yards out, which he couldn't really miss, but somehow looked as though he might have done a couple of times. Massive for his confidence, but overall, the finishing on show was poor. The running was poor. The pressing was poor. And somehow Chelsea have come away with this one. In terms of the way that the game started, it couldn't have been any worse. When Chelsea go 1-0 down, you could. there's not any amount of money you could give me to go and put a free flipping bet on to say that we're going to win a football match. Spurs started the game electric. And I do want to say, as much as I flipping hate Tottenham Hotspur, I will give them credit for the way that they dug in. Vicario, 17 million, is the signing of the season in the Premier League, hands down, and they fought hard. However, the red card for Romero and the red card for Udogi, some people will call it karma. I will absolutely say... Both Udogi and Romero should not have even been on the field when they were actually sent off in the game. When the history books remind us that Udogi got sent off, Romero got sent off. It should have been done before that. VAR is an absolute disgrace to this sport. If you're going to have VAR, you're going to have the Premier League, the most watched football league in the world, the biggest sport in the world. If you're going to have a video assistant referee to aid the referees make the right decisions within and around the rule books of the game, how can they get everything wrong over and over again? I'd even go as far as to say that the goal that Son scores should have also been a goal. I'll give him that one as well. Somehow, VAR has managed to make itself the biggest talking point here for me, even though Chelsea have gone to our biggest flipping rivals and beaten them 4-1. If you haven't already liked the video, this is your flipping time to do so. And subscribe to GBFC. Box number one is a red box for VAR. It's got to a point now where every single weekend, we're no longer talking about the brilliance of the Premier League, how exciting it is. We're talking about how a governing body can somehow over and over and over again get decisions so awfully incorrect whilst removing some of the brilliant passion, some of those moments of ecstasy from fans, from people that have this ambiguous side of football that we love, where sometimes we don't know if it's the right decision, but teams and fans are given these opportunities to celebrate. And sometimes it can be, sometimes it is absolutely guaranteed. However, it just does not get any better. 
every single week. There are contentious decisions that are just get being done wrong over and over again. And they're the ones with all these screens, they're drawing all of these lines, they've got all of these angles, they've got green lights, they've got red lights, you name it, they've got it. Yet they still somehow get it wrong. Spurs, don't get me wrong, deserve to have two men sent off. And I think maybe, who knows, we could have had six, we could have had seven if they were both sent off at the times in which they should have been. But box number one is a red for VAR. Box number two is a green for Cole Palmer. Despite Chelsea, for the majority of this match, looking as though we had no idea how to beat nine players for pretty much the whole of the second half, Cole Palmer is by far above and beyond the best player right now at Chelsea Football Club. And I think it's just everything that he does from the way that he works in tight spaces, his availability for the ball. When it comes to looking at what Chelsea failed to do today, which was kill, we could have had 10. We should have had 10, 11, 12 goals today if it wasn't for the goalie and our inability to play a final ball and finish. And don't get me wrong, we'll look at this and be like, we just beat Tottenham 4-1. I promise you, I'm absolutely over the flipping moon. I've got the sunset to my right hand side. I've got my doggo in front of me and I've got you lot listening to me right here. Cole Palmer though is the diamond in the rough right now with this Chelsea team. There isn't enough quality. There's not enough football in IQ, but Cole Palmer's got it all. Another man who was robbed of a famous beauty today at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium was Moises Caicedo. That goal is also a goal. There was a plenty, plenty of disallowed goals in the game today, but Caicedo's finish, wow. That was absolutely incredible. Nicholas Jackson's got his left foot in one postcode, his right foot in another postcode, and apparently he's disrupting the view of the goalkeeper. Mate, you could have literally parked seven London buses through the legs of Nicholas Jackson there. Moises Caicedo, the only midfielder actually in the team today that wanted to play the ball forwards. Gallagher insisted on playing it back. Enzo, I don't know what's going on with this bloke, but he is totally off the pace, getting absolutely disrupted in the middle. He's too slow on the ball. The passing, which is supposed to be the thing that he's so good at, the vision, isn't there. Moises Caicedo, on the other hand, is magnificent. Box number four, we've given it to Levi Colwell for a yellow because it's a moment of madness there at the end of the first half where you've heard what Levi Colwell's had to say in the build-up to this game about playing against Spurs in the youth team. And then Chelsea... I've got this game under control. We're playing against 10 men. We're dominating the possession. We're trying to create opportunities and Levi nearly loses his head. As well as that, he turns his back. Very basic stuff. The deflected goal, yes, you could say it's unlucky, but as a centre half, you can't do that. He's playing also at left back today, which I thought, again, didn't really want to see that. I wanted to see Silva and Colwell in those centre back positions with Cucurella at left back. Levi's out of position. Kulisevsky, he's absolutely got his number all day. Levi's kind of stuck between, should I go for him because I'm the left back and I've got to get my man, or shall I play like a centre back but then just decide to turn around? Not good from him, and I actually think it was smart of Maurizio Pochettino to hoik him off at half-time, just so that we didn't get into these kind of, well, the game was there for the taking, but because we can't manage our heads we're going to absolutely go ahead and lose it. So Levi gets box number four. Box number five, Nicholas Jackson. He gets a hat-trick away at Tottenham Hotspur. If this doesn't give him the confidence to actually become a striker, a proper striker, I don't know what will. Other than the goals, I have to talk about this here because the runs were awful. The final ball was awful. The finishing, other than the three goals, this is how this game is so mad. I can say that my striker scored a hat-trick and be like, I literally don't have many more hairs left on my head, but if I did have, they'd all be out of my head. Nicholas Jackson, please, 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 bulk up a little bit, get stronger, be able to hold up the ball and score and just keep doing it, all right? You got yourself a hat trick. It's a massive end to this game. I've posted an Instagram photo of Mason with the scoreline in the background. This will go down as one of the most iconic games in the history of this channel and one of my favorite matches ever, ever, as a Chelsea fan, simply because I really believe we were bad. Really, really bad. How we could not dismantle nine men, although we technically did. You guys know what I'm saying here, don't you? I can absolutely see you all there being like, George, just be happy. Just relax. You're on a beautiful island. The sun is shining. The sun's coming up, even. I just can't believe what I've seen. Jackson gets a hat trick 
and he gets a green because it's a hat trick at Spurs. Box number six is a red for Raheem Sterling because quite frankly, that might be one of the worst performances I've ever seen from Raheem Sterling in my life and a winger at Chelsea Football Club in my life. This guy can be magnificent. The game is there for the taking. You are the senior figure on this team that isn't Thiago Silva and yet still, every time you get the ball, you're tripping over your own feet, you're running into opposition players. I do not understand how Raheem Sterling, with all of the goals he scored in the Premier League, all the assists, all of the experience he's had at Liverpool, City, Chelsea, how can he still put in a performance like that? And I'm sorry, I could just be here today saying what a massive win this is for Chelsea because it is. If we can kick on from this and Pochettino gets them in there and is like, look, all right, enjoy this today. But we have got Manchester City on Sunday in the Premier League, the best team in this league. We have put Spurs back down, inflicted Ange's first defeat, but bloody hell, if we even play twice as good against City as we do did today, we're getting battered. All right, that is the harsh reality of this incredible, phenomenal victory that we have got. What a weird six things we learned video this has been. I'm going to get this out as soon as I can for you lot because, I don't know, I might even have a beer for my breakfast at this rate. This has been incredible. Chelsea have got the job done. We have won 4-1 after going 1-0 down. Pochettino beats Ange. They are no longer unbeaten. They're not winning the Premier League. And London is blue. Come on, you blues.